Hey guys, this is Matt for Creative. Today we're talking about the brand new iPhone 16, but moreover it's going to be the iPhone 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max, which I think are the only ones that actually have like true functional differences, except for the capture button. That capture button that has come to all iPhones I think is extremely important for people like me who use these cameras as dedicated video cameras and photography cameras like all the time. And I think the placement of that button is great. I think the functionality that they added to it is great. And I remember early on watching the presentation today and I was like, you guys are talking about a button a lot. But then they actually showed what the functionality of that button is. And I thought, okay, that is exactly some, that is something that's very usable. And I'm thinking, am I upgrading from my 15 Pro Max to one of the new iPhones? And the short answer is yes. And I'm going to be kind of, I think I'm going to trade in my older iPhones to kind of like, you know, make the uh, financial commitment to this a little bit more bearable. And what I'm coming from right now is, of course, the 15 Pro Max, which is kind of like my daily driver. Um, I did have an iPhone 13 mini, which was my favorite phone, but unfortunately that was stolen, so that's not really a factor. But another one of my daily drivers is an iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I have a 13 Pro, but it has a cracked screen, so that's not really gonna add that much value. So I may keep that as just like an emergency backup phone, which I do recommend to everybody, no matter if it's like the top tier iPhone or something like lower, I always recommend have a phone that can easily have an eSIM transferred to it. When I had my phone stolen, and this is not like a sponsorship of anything, when I had my phone stolen, I did not have anything, but I was able to contact my provider and just swap it easily to one of my backup phones. And I was like, yes, I am solid. And then I got my, you know, theft and loss insurance phone. And thankfully I have this. So you can see the previous video that I had just put out about the um, process of doing this in 2024, which is actually pretty quick. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm keeping this. This will now be the designated backup and usually what I do is every other year, I go between the smaller iPhone and the bigger iPhone. So what it was, it was the 13 Pro standard. The next year, it was the 14 Pro Max, just to have like a different variation in size. And what I fully intended to do was to have the 15 be the smaller iPhone. But the only reason why I got the large one is that the five times zoom turned out to be amazing. Um, I've tried the three times zoom on the 14 Pro Max and the 13 Pro and even my friend's iPhone 15 Pro regular. And I always found the three times zoom a little muddy. The clarity on this five times zoom was amazing and it made it into a really functional um, third camera. For me, I have my standard look, you know, that's maybe use a camera like this, have this set up here and kind of had my standard shot. When I'm kind of walking around, I want more of like getting everything because I live in New York City and getting all the buildings and everything that's happening, I'll go for the ultra wide. And again, that's something that's been improved on the new camera. So we'll talk about that in a second. But then I want to get things really far in the distance and I do not want to use any type of digital zoom that kind of like muddies up my process. I'm just not a big fan of that personally, even though in a pinch I will digital zoom and have it kind of help render, but I, I don't really like using it. But with the clarity of this, I was like, I have to go for the larger iPhone. And again, I am somebody who, who trends down to get the smaller iPhone when possible. And thankfully with the 16 Pro and Pro Max, the only size differences are going to be, well, the new screen sizes are gonna be a little bit bigger for both the standard and the Max. Um, <clears throat> but this actually makes for the first year that all of the iPhones are gonna be a little different. As far as I can tell, the, um, the screen size on the standard 15 and 15 max, those did not change. So this is the first year we have four different, I think my cat is trying to get up there. We're not doing that. 
but I think this is the first time that we have four different screen sizes because at one time it was the mini, the standard, which was the same as regular and pro, and then we had the max, which is three screen sizes, but now we do have four, so that's a little bit interesting. I, again, would want to go for the smallest phone possible, and because the mini doesn't exist anymore, you may think, okay, you're going to go for the 16 then. Um, no, it's because <clears throat> I don't find those phones functional for the size that they are. As a mini, yes, I think that would be an amazing size, and I would love for them to return to that type of phone, maybe as an SE or something, because that's my favorite size phone. But you know, thankfully, these ones are made of titanium and aluminum, so they weigh a little bit less. They kind of shrunk the borders on it, so it's not as big as the other phones are. So, at least like the 14 Pro Max, which is a heavy phone to kind of carry. I have it somewhere charging over there. But this is the year where I can actually go for the normal Pro and not the Pro Max. And it's great because I don't want a big phone. I don't see the point of it. I mean... These phones, they charge really quickly, so you put this on a charge, you'll have charge, you have a, maybe a MagSafe battery pack that you need if you really do need it. But because I normally dual wield like phones, because one's going to be editing the video, one's going to be, you know, doing research, and I can actually use the other phone for something else, maybe phone calls or whatever, taking photos. It's always good to have two different size phones and having these as minimal as possible, I think it's gonna be great. Um, let's talk about that capture button. So this is the back of an iPhone 15 Pro. This is the action button, which I have mapped to something different from a camera because if you want to use this as a camera button, naturally your hand goes in the way. If you want to kind of hold it like this, you can be a little bit unnatural, but if you actually put your fingers here and you're shooting wide, ultra wide, your fingers will be in the shot and it kind of just messes things up here. So what they did is they put just a button here and I was like, this could have been maybe a capacitive button with a fake click, but I think it is, oh wait, is capacitive the one where it's not an actual click Whatever it is, this does actually click, but what I thought was extremely interesting is now that you can kind of light press RIP 3D touch because that was an amazing feature, but you can kind of kind of 3D press that button here and kind of get like some <clears throat> quick zoom functions, which I think is very usable because I do not like using the zoom functions when I'm using a video because that means your thumb has to go from my natural position to here and then we can actually go and do this so we have zoom which you can kind of hold and press and play with that or you can dedicate you know two five this it's a little bit not as smooth as it could be but with this i'm able to zoom out a little bit zoom in a little bit oh that's perfect and then click and I saw other apps can have different functionalities. Like I would love for it to be instead of maybe Zoom that you could play with the um, the exposure because I love playing with the exposure setting. It is one of the most helpful things because I like to bring it down a little bit because it gives you more of like more shadows and I would call it like a more natural, less HDRE photo. So I really hope that you can map it to something else other than Zoom because I'd love to have Zoom, but other features would be great as well. So as a physical button on this iPhone, now it's gone from one to three to now four and now five buttons. And this is on all of the iPhones. Um, I think literally just for that, that is why I'm gonna be getting the iPhone 16 Pro because the AI features, which are not out yet and are not going to be out, those will be coming later on this year in a beta update, which means we're going to have to be waiting for all this chat GBT interaction, um, you know, with the phone. That's a little bit of a bummer, I honestly have to say. But um, I, I think this is going to be great when it's here, but right now I'm not really missing anything. I do own the um, Meta Ray-Ban glasses, and I can use the AI functionality on that. That has been great, kind of like, hey, what am I looking at? What time is it? Really relevant questions. And if I really want to, I'll go dedicate it 
go to the dedicated ChatGBT app and kind of work with it there. But it's going to be great because I'm going to be able to ask Siri so many things um, that are relevant to me and will gather information from all the information on my... Shut up, Siri, shut up. No one's talking to you. I hate, oh, did, did, were you guys watching the presentation and did, when they said, hey, blank, did it trigger your, your Siri here? Because that was kind of what it did with mine and I thought that was a little bit annoying. But anyway, I think this is an interesting phone. I am considering getting that new kind of bronze color or the natural titanium. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be getting. <clears throat> I, I saw the renders for the new color for the Pro and it looked a little bit more kind of like a leather case and I was like, that's kind of what I would like. This is more of like a almost champagne color um, in certain angles. So I'm not really sure if I want to get a light iPhone because I usually go for a dark iPhone. I never go for the white or lighter colors of an iPhone. I think the only consideration I would have thought would be for the natural titanium look. And we'll see about that. Um, so I will be getting it, hopefully trading some of these things in, just so I don't have to like, you know, put the entire cost <clears throat> um, on right now. But also we do have the, well, we're gonna talk about this briefly. The new AirPods, they're great. One has ANC active noise cancellation, one doesn't. I really don't find them very useful. Um, because I do like the the pros that have the ear tips inside. I think those are functionally better for you. Um, of course, they updated the AirPods Max to new colors and USB-C. Biggest joke update ever. This is a product that's needed an update for a while. They sound great. I already have them. And basically I have the exact same pair that they released today. There is no reason for me to get any of these um, or anybody else unless you really want one of the new colors, but that's it. That, that and lightning. I do have to say um, my AirPods uh, Max are the last the last Apple product that I need <clears throat> to have lightning cables for, because you can't do uh, Qi charging because they just don't have that functionality. Even my 14 Pro Max and my 13 Pro, they can be wirelessly charged. They never have to be plugged in. This one, of course, has USB-C and all my iPads, you have USB-C, my camera has USB-C. So that may be one of those things that's just great, but they did not improve the audio at all. I mean, what are we doing? This this is a joke. Um, I'm very disappointed in Apple for that, and, and I thought I was just going to briefly run over that, but I just want to show my disappointment first, and probably everybody else is a little disappointment, disappointed too. Um, but I think what's really relevant um, is the Apple Watch. I did have mine stolen. You can even see the uh, tan line that I have here for it. And I'm like... Normally, I would not really want to upgrade the Apple Watch, but I think this is the year. First, I have to do it, and I think it's it's nice having a slimmer slimmer Apple Watch. It's going to be great having the screen be a little bit bigger. I think that's always going to help. Um, I think it's just like a nice upgrade. I mean, for somebody who wants an Apple Watch, and wow, they have jet black again on an aluminum case, I think that's going to be beautiful. That's my favorite iPhone 7 plus color. That was my favorite color. Although I do remember that jet black being extremely susceptible to scratches. So we'll see exactly what that is. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear that outside. They're doing construction. Um, but anyway, that is, uh, what is, oh, then they kind of upgraded the uh, Apple Watch Ultra to kind of a new darker color, black color. Yeah. I don't really see a point anymore because those screen sizes are so similar in size. Basically, the Ultra is a larger battery on the watch. I know it has other features, but for the normal people who get that, it's just a bigger battery. That's it. And what I've realized is if you put it on power saving mode, the standard one, you can get that lasting up to about like three days. And for me, I had it lasting for three days. <clears throat> so it really wasn't an issue whatsoever. I don't think that's construction outside. I think somebody's vacuuming. 
Yeah, I think something's vacuuming. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, that's the kind of the recap for this event. I thought that that was a pretty kind of good event. I'm happy with that new capture button. That's really it. And now I get to downgrade the size to a normal Pro. So I feel a little bit better about that. That's the reason for this upgrade. Keeping that five times zoom and having a smaller iPhone, I think that's the way that I'm gonna go. Anyway, guys, if you have any comments or questions, put it in the comment section below. Don't forget I'm on Instagram and threads at m8b9. You can email me at creativenyc2024 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time.